Hey, what's up? This is Chris from Terrestrial Imaging here to demonstrate a firmware update for your ST16 controller and your Typhoon H drone. After looking online through countless forums and Google searches, etc., and through personal conversations with a bunch of our customers, we found that a lot of people are having problems doing a firmware update. Now, they're either bricking their machine, having the uh, upgrade process not complete, uh, having inconsistent numbers, you know, etc., etc. They're having a lot of problems. So this video is going to show you how to do this without any issues taking the steps that we take. Now there might be different steps out there and again I'm going to be showing you steps that I take that 9 out of 10 times, you know, give us a success. So now our approach at this oops, sorry, is using our uh, S micro SD cards. So now I know with the latest firmware, you know, today's January 10th, 2017 and with the latest firmware you can use uh, your Wi-Fi to do an over the air update. Now, there's limitations to that depending on your SD16 battery percentage. If it's too low, then you can't do the update. If it's you know, high enough, then you can. But I recommend using these chips because it's consistent and you don't need to rely on a battery power for your SD16 controller. So with these micro SD cards, I'm going to show you guys how to go to the unique website, find the files, put them onto these cards, and then using these micro SD cards, update your SD16 controller and your Typhoon H. So hang on, and we'll dive right in and I'll show you how to go about that. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys where to go and find those firmware files and how to go about getting them. So for starters, before we even do that, I want to point out that we have two different chips here. You know, you can use one chip, two chips, depending on what you want to do. So now, Unique recommends that you take those files and you have the SC16 firmware on one SD card and you have the Typhoon H firmware on another SD card. You can also go ahead and download one onto one chip upgrade, go back, delete it, download the new file, and then go and upgrade the next thing. So in this case, I already have two chips already with the firmware files on them, already pre-downloaded. So I have so I have the separate, separate runs, one for the ST16 and one for the Typhoon H. So now going into my computer, I'm going to show you guys where to find those files. Again, they're already downloaded, and this is just to show you guys where to find them. So now on here, you want to go onto Unique's website. And on their home page, mine's minimized, but up top you'll see different options. But I have the drop down menu, so I'm going to click that. And I'm going to go to support. And now in support, I'm going to go to downloads. Now from here, it's going to ask you to choose your product model. So look for the Typhoon H and go ahead and click that. Now from here, you're going to see different things that you can download. The GUI, the manual, the drone firmware, and the controller firmware. So you're going to want to go ahead and just download the drone firmware and download the controller firmware. Now both might take a couple minutes, a couple seconds, depending on your connection, but again we already have those downloaded. Now one thing I want to point out if you can follow my mouse over here on the left, we have the Typhoon H and the ST16 firmware is already downloaded. Now if you take a look at their name, they're both original copies of the files. If you take a notice, there's the underscore a.bin and the 1.27.unique. Now if you notice down over here on the right side where I have these files downloaded, because I've already downloaded them multiple times, you'll see this parentheses over here um, with a 5 in it. So that is the fifth copy of this file that I've downloaded. Now if I were to take that file, and if I were to drag that into you know, my folder, it's going to be unreadable by the controller, and it's going to be unreadable by the drone. We found that if you don't have the original file name, you get this timeout error and the update won't work, but if you have the original file name over here, then it's going to work. So now, in the case that you have those parentheses, you can just rename the file and delete that. That way you have the original file name. So make sure also that when you're done downloading that you safely eject your, S or your micro SD card or your SD card or whatever you're using. That way you don't corrupt any of the files that are on there. So now once you're all set and you have this, we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to go about updating. So first we're going to update the ST16 controller. Then we're going to go ahead and update the drone. All right, so now that we have our firmware, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take it and we're going to use that micro SD card and we're going to put it in the bottom of the ST16 controller. So now you'll see on the bottom there is a micro SD card slot. So we're going to go ahead and put that chip in there. Now one thing I want to point out is that it's a pretty small port and it's pretty springy. So you got to make sure that you get that click. If not, your SD card is going to go shooting out and it's going to be a pain in the neck. But once it's snapped in and all good to go, we're now going to go into the controller and go about doing our update. Alright guys, so what I want to point out is that when I put my micro SD card, I already had my controller on. 
Now you can put the micro SD card in with your controller on or your controller off, but we found that depending on what you do, there are some inconsistencies. Sometimes the controller finds the SD card and is reading it, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we find that if you do it while the controller is off, it finds it. If you put the card in while the controller is on, it finds it. It's a little inconsistent. So what we always go and do first is once we put that chip in and the controller's on, we go to the bottom left uh, hand of our screen and we click the pad button. Now from here, we're going to just press OK. And now there's this little circle button on the bottom that has these six little squares in the middle. We're going to go ahead and click that. And then we're going to go ahead and click settings. Oop. So from settings, we're going to scroll down and we're going to press storage. Now in here, scroll down some more. And I guess you'll see that I didn't even find the SD card. So now this is where the inconsistencies happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my SD card out. I'm going to go and pop it back in. And there you go, it found the SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and press mount. And now you'll see that the SD card is now mounted to the SD16 controller and it's now readable. So I'm going to go ahead and press the little home tile on my screen. And it's going to take us back. Now from here, you want to go ahead and press system settings. Press OK. And now on the bottom left, you want to uh, want to press about controller. So now up here, you'll see that my ST16 version is 3.01.B18. Uh, now this is a pretty very old and outdated model, so we're, or rather firmware. So we're going to go ahead and just press update. We're going to press OK. So now the update's going to take some time, so we're just going to let it sit, and we're going to fast forward through it, and then we'll talk to you guys right after it's all set. Alright guys, so now once you get this little language setting option, you're going to know that your update is complete. So unless you're fluent in Chinese, just go ahead, leave it on English, and press OK. So from here, we're going to now go into System Settings, and you know, you'll notice the different colors in the background and everything. And we're going to now go to About Controller on the bottom left, and now you're going to see that our ST16 model is now 3.01.B27. Now before it was 3.01.B18, so we have upgraded quite a while from then. So now we're going to upgrade our Typhoon H, and we're just going to go ahead and press the little back loop arrow on our controller and take us back to the home menu. So now from here, we're going to go ahead and show you how to get that H going and get it connected. Because since the ST16 controller is now updated, it lost its binding with your Typhoon H. So we're going to have to go ahead and rebind the Typhoon H and then go ahead with the update. Alright guys, so now we're going to go ahead and start the update for the Typhoon H. So what you're going to want to do is you want to take your micro SD card that has the firmware on it and you're going to want to go ahead and put that in first. So you want to do this before you do anything else. So take off your gimbal guard, put that to the side, and on the back of the camera over here there's going to be, it's going to be hard to see from the video, but over here there's a micro SD slot. So we're going to want to go ahead and put that chip in. Now be careful when you put it in because it's a little springy and it can shoot out just like the controller. All right, so now that my chip is in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my battery out of this LiPo safe bag. I'm going to make sure that my battery has some juice by using this little meter over here. I'm going to go ahead and pop that in. Now you'll see that we got 16.2 volts, so we're all good to go. So I'm going to pop my battery in, and I'm going to go ahead and turn my drone on. So now one thing I want to point out is that when you're going to turn your drone on, you have this blue blinking light, which means that you're not connected to your ST16 controller. So in this case, you're not going to get any connection because your ST16 controller lost its binding with the Typhoon H after the firmware update. So you'll see we're still blinking blue. Now, if you are already bound, it would either be purple, red, or green, depending on which mode you're in, either smart, angle, or home. 
So from here, we now have to put the Typhoon H into binding mode by rocking it at a 45 degree angle. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now you'll see we have that orange blinking light on the back. So from here, we're now going to go into our controller. We're now going to press System Settings. And you'll see in the bind mode, there's no model and there's no camera. So we have no connection. So we're going to go ahead and press Refresh and Reset a couple times. And now you'll see that under model, there's a number. And under camera, there's a model. So go ahead and click both of those. Have them both highlighted in blue. And now hit bind on the bottom right of your screen. It's syncing, and we got connection established. Now, it might say that you don't have connection with your camera over here. And if that's the case, just press your white model again and just hit bind, and then you'll have a connection established. Now, from here, what I like to do is press that little back loop on your controller and go back to the home screen. Kind of resets everything in my head. And now you'll see that my, my camera is connected to my drone. So right over here, we're connected. So now, again, we're going to want to go back into system settings. Press OK. And from here, go to About Controller. So now you see for Typhoon H, there's a gimbal version number, there's an autopilot version number, there's a camera version number, and for the real sense it says NA, that's because we don't have a real sense connected to this model. So now a lot of the inconsistencies with updating your firmware happens here. So under Typhoon H, instead of all your different version numbers, it'll just say NA for everything. And now if you go ahead and try to update when you have NA for everything, there's a high chance that you're going to brick your machine or have an incomplete update which then can cause a lot of problems in the future for you. So a little weird simple trick that we've discovered just through you know, testing this out ourselves is you're gonna to go to camera select over here and it's already highlighted Seagull 3 Pro and just hit select again, then hit okay. Now go back to about controller and nine out of 10 times if you had NA for everything already listed, you'll now have numbers displayed. But in the event that you don't, just reset your controller, reset your copter, try our little camera select trick again, or just keep resetting until you get a connection. Sometimes we found that if you just let everything sit off for about five minutes and go ahead and start it up again, usually it displays numbers. So now in, the, well, in this event, we do have numbers, so we're all set to update. So we're gonna go ahead and just press update. From here, it's asking okay or cancel, just press okay. And now it says setup one out of two checking. So now we're just gonna wait and we're gonna fast forward this video and show you guys or come back to you guys right after it's all set. But I do want to point out one more thing. If you go ahead and update without having any of those version numbers, it'll say one out of two checking and it might get past that and update. But then it'll only say updating one out of two or one out of four and it won't go ahead with the complete update. So again, make sure you have those numbers. So we'll come back to you guys right after this is all set. successful firmware update so what we're going to go ahead and do is just press OK on our screen and I want to point out that you should have heard your control uh, sorry your Typhoon H reboot and make a reboot sound so from here it's still going to show all the old numbers that you have so you're going to want to go ahead and just reset your Typhoon H and now turn that back on and from here press that little back arrow on your controller and take that back to your home screen so give it a sec and your Typhoon H will reconnect so this time, it you know it might take a while for the camera to show anything, but um, in this event, just click on the back, click on the back panel of your screen, press System Settings, press OK. From here, to say not connected to camera, so what I do is just refresh, reset, refresh, reset, press it a couple times, wait for it to show up. And there you go. Now the camera showed up. Click it, press Bind, connection established. Now it's not displaying it, so we're just going to bind it again. Now it's showing our connection. Go back to our home screen. You'll see now, again, that we have connection to our camera. So now I go back to System Settings. Press OK. Go to About Controller. And now you'll see that we have different updated versions for our gimbal, autopilot, and camera. So we got our gimbal at 1.25, we got our autopilot at 1.3, and we got our camera at 3.2.26. So all this stuff as of now is the latest numbers, but uh, you guys might have different numbers at the time of your update, so make sure you record all that and go ahead and go through the updating process. 
So now I'm going to just wrap this video up for you guys up and give you guys a little recap about everything that we just did. All right, so now that we're all updated and finished and rebound, there's a couple things that I want to point out. First of all, in our case, we used a camera that we had already used on another machine for updates. So our camera was already updated. So that's why when we went and did the update on here, you'll see that it only said update two out of two updating the autopilot. So now in your case, if you're using a fresh camera and fresh copter that haven't been upgraded before, it'll update the autopilot, the gimbal, and everything else other than just the autopilot. So in our case, that's why you saw a shorter update. And another thing I want to point out too is that once you're done with the update, you want to go back to Unique's website and look at the published numbers that they have for their firmware and make sure that all those published version numbers match the version numbers that you now see on your controller. If those version numbers aren't the same, then there's going to be problems with communication between the Typhoon H and the controller and it's just not worth the risk. Now, if you don't have the proper numbers, go ahead and re-update and redo the process that we just showed you guys what to do. Now, in some cases, moving the chips around created a corrupted file, or there was just a, a poor connection. You know, there's different options or different things that might cause these problems, but just go ahead and retake all those steps and do everything again, and you should have a good update. Now, if you guys have any problems or you need any help, give us a call, put it down in a comment, we'll answer that for you guys or send us an email and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. But in the event that, you know, everything worked out great, also leave a comment too letting us know that we helped you out. So have a great day guys and thanks for watching.